This was Steven Stifler of The First American Pie. And this was Steven Stifler in the final film of the core franchise, American Reunion. The sooner you realize that you're the bitch, not the boss, the better off you'll be. What was that? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, Mr. Duraswamy. Whenever a character in a franchise unexpectedly pops with an audience, it can be very tempting for the powers that be behind the scenes to drive that character into the ground in future installments. In the case of Stifler, the character who was once a beloved comedic breakout quickly dwindled in the eyes of fans. The character became the embodiment of what happens when a franchise tries to bring a side character to the forefront without remembering what made the character successful in the first place. But before we bake up this critical pie, make sure you subscribe to Nerdstalgic so you never miss a video. Released in 1999, American Pie was a throwback to the 70s and 80s sex comedies like Porky's or Animal House. It's brash, in your face, comedic sensibility pushed the boundaries of good taste and was a massive hit with audiences in theaters and eventually home video. On a mere $11 million budget, it ended up raking in over $200 million. The film follows a group of high school friends who make a pact to lose their virginity by graduation. We will get laid! Stifler's role in the film, though, is largely extraneous. Although he is friends with the central characters, he is not part of the virginity contract, and so he's left out of much of the film's conflict. What? Whatever. He's there to provide comedic flavor to the film not to be a driving force of the plot. He's portrayed as your typical party animal comedic archetype. Despite the film having an ensemble cast, Sean William Scott was undoubtedly the film's breakout star. The raunchy, unapologetic humor of Stifler became one of the film's highlights. I'll tell you one thing though, I don't think he's gonna have a problem with school anymore. Perhaps the clearest evidence of this is the way Scott's stardom escalated between each film. Popular movies like Final Destination, Road Trip, and Dude Where's My Car cemented Scott as a rapidly growing comedic on-screen presence. Meanwhile, his American Pie co-stars largely appeared in middling comedies, never quite hitting the same heights as the American Pie films, with the exception of Allison Hannigan, who already had a following through Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and later co-starring in How I Met Your Mother. Scott's post-Pie success and the popularity of Stifler in the first film led the filmmakers to the logical conclusion of making Stifler a bigger part of the franchise's future plotlines. The gradual degradation of the character begins in American Pie 2. Stifler is given a larger role that's mostly entertaining, but Stifler is less a character and more of a joke delivery mechanism. I got laid 23 times this year, and I'm not counting the Hummer I got in the library stacks, baby. Sure, he's been given a larger role within the plot of American Pie 2, but his role just feels like an overinflated rehash of the last film. His primary character arc can really only be described as trying to get a pair of women into a threesome, which, spoiler warning, he succeeds. At. Granted, American Pie 2 isn't trying to do anything with the character that's all that divergent from the first film. Stifler's primary job in film 1 and 2 is to be a comedic side character, and the sequel largely pulls it off. Because he doesn't have to do any heavy lifting dramatically or in the film's conflict, he continues to be the entertaining bit player audiences loved the first time around. This film could have been the place to provide Stifler with more depth that could have supported the character moving forward. The choice to make Stifler one of the primary characters in the subsequent movies wouldn't have been so disastrous if we had spent more time making Stifler into a three-dimensional character in either of the first two films. Even Scott admitted in a 2019 interview with Entertainment Weekly to rewriting elements of the character way back in the first film to make him more likable. Scott told EW, The Stifler character was in two or three scenes, and he was written to be such an asshole that I was like, I don't even know if I'd want to play this guy. Scott could see from the first movie that the character needed work, but this idea of the guy who wants to be loved the most never comes through in a dramatic or emotionally satisfying way in any of the films, despite the filmmakers' attempts late in the franchise. The minute Stifler becomes more than a colorful side character in the third film, American Wedding, is where things really begin to fall apart. In American Wedding, we are left with an emotionally flimsy plotline that hinges on Stifler and Jim's friendship being some vital element to the series. At no point in the previous two films do we get any real sense of Stifler's relationship with any of the individual central group of characters. He often seems like the barely tolerated braggart, so it's hard to believe that he has a uniquely special relationship specifically with Jim. Without that investment, 
Much of American Wedding's conflicts just aren't compelling. The film strains us to get us invested in the ongoing conflict of Stifler's repeated failures to make Jim's wedding a success. It also doesn't help that numerous side characters don't appear in this installment, including Chris Klein's Oz, who always felt like more of an actual friend to Jim and the other central characters than Stifler. By elevating Stifler to this larger role, the series truly begins to develop diminishing returns on the character and his humor. The outrageous sex jokes that once made Stifler such an unexpected and unpredictable source of comedy have now grown stale. These problems are exacerbated even further by American Reunion, the belated 2012 sequel intended to cap off the American Pie saga. Here, Stifler is essentially one of the emotional cruxes of the film. He is a pathetic depiction of a man whose life peaked in high school, now working a dead-end job with a demeaning boss. The rejection he faces by his high school friends is meant to be tragic. Jessica, it's good to see you. No, it wasn't. What the? But it all seems like a reasonable response to a guy who hasn't matured since the end of high school. None of the groundwork has been laid for an emotionally satisfying arc, and therefore the audience feels nothing. So what can we learn from all of this? Perhaps the most important takeaway is that less is often more. When a character unexpectedly hits big with an audience, it's easy to want to immediately increase that character's role in a story. Perhaps the best illustration of this is Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean. Like Stifler, a character who was once a colorful side character was eventually elevated into essentially the series' primary protagonist. By doing this, those brief flashes of comedy and quirky characterization become tired, rote, and most fatally, predictable. Now, that's not to say a side character can't ever be elevated to lead status. Perhaps the best and most recent example of this is Breaking Bad Saul Goodman, who was, in a way, a Stifler type. He was a character with a brief, plot-adjacent role that would have an impact in big comedic moments. Saul not only grew in prominence in Breaking Bad, he became the lead of the spinoff Better Call Saul. The key here is simply depth of character. By providing Saul Goodman with clear motivations, backstory, and desires, we came to understand why he acted the way he did and saw him as more than comedic relief or a cool background character. Unlike Stifler, he was a real character that we could relate to. Without this understanding of Stifler's inner psychology, even if it were revealed to be comedic, we don't care about the struggles the series puts him through later on in the franchise. As Scott himself said in the EW interview, he's probably really insecure. He's like the guy who wants to be loved the most. There is something that does feel tragic about Stifler, the man whose life will inevitably peak in high school. Okay. What makes you little f thinking you crash one of the Stiffmeister's parties? Did you just refer to yourself as the Stiffmeister? <laughs> and who likely hides his insecurities behind his brash sense of humor. But we never get any sense of this side of the character in the early installments when it matters most. Any attempts to make Stifler more than a bit player later in the franchise are dead on arrival because he is just a bunch of sex jokes in the form of a person. Come on guys, that was pretty funny. Yeah, maybe in high school it was funny. Now it's just a felony. Sometimes it's better to let a character, even one as beloved as Stifler, stay a supporting player rather than elevating them to the starring role. What do you think? Was there more that could have been done to save Stifler? Or was the character best left as comedic relief? Let us know what you think and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Nerdstalgic.